The following satellite transmission, copyrighted by the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, is available for live broadcast in 10 seconds or for taping and rebroadcast by any AM, FM, shortwave, cable, or video outlet globally. This is a WBN Worldwide Broadcasting Network production. This is Vern Benham Grimsley with the Spiritual Renaissance Broadcast. Years ago, I met a great old American Indian medicine man, a Sioux of the Lakota tribe named Lame Deer. He wrote a book titled Lame Deer, Seeker of Visions. And he and I were once among a dozen or more speakers scheduled to address an outdoor gathering of thousands at Chautauqua Park in Boulder, Colorado. The night before this day-long festival of philosophers, we all convened in a meeting room at the University of Colorado to decide on an order of events, who was to speak when on the program and for how long. There we sat, psychologists, philosophers, poets, yogis, telepathists, phrenologists, sages, seers, savants, and Lame Deer the Indian and I. We listened for some 30 or 40 minutes, during which the discussion became increasingly animated, contentious, heated. Voices were raised, teeth clenched, veins distended, capillaries engorged, nostrils flared as the various teachers from their different disciplines argued over who would speak before, after, and adjacent to whom. At last, my friend Lame Deer, who had sat silently observing this display of frayed nerves in the fray with the unblinking equipoise of the chief on a 1940 nickel, rose slowly to his feet and stood quietly by his empty seat in the circle of chairs until, like crickets startled to silence by footsteps on the lawn, all of the speakers suddenly fell into a hush as they looked up at lame deer standing majestically above them in his fringed buckskin shirt, a turquoise necklace and a feather in his black braided hair. Sweeping the circle with his hawk eyes, the Indian spoke. Everybody here mad, you all fighting. No good, no good, he said. You no need lame deer. You need great spirit in this council. Lame deer, leave you now. Leave my seat for great spirit to come sit in council. Great spirit, bring peace. And with that, the old medicine man turned and on silent moccasins walked from the room. The group sat in silent shame as the door swept shut behind him, all rebuked by the moral majesty of this wrinkled, wise old red man who powerfully, pointedly had called this gathering of spiritual teachers to begin following their teachings and work in peace and harmony instead of badgering, bickering, and battling. For the truth is that every meeting should have an empty chair for the great spirit. Every conclave, council, congress, club, and convention needs an empty chair for the great spirit. Every meeting of the minds ought also be a meeting of the souls, a commingling of spirits, a melting of leaden-hearted hatred to the molten flow of sympathetic feelings and of love, whatever your enterprise or undertaking. Leave a chair for the spirit. At the family dinner table, at corporate gatherings, even at meetings of the board, fewer will be bored if the group process be enlivened by the infusion of higher spiritual purposes and ideals. The only hope there is for peace on earth globally and peace of heart personally is to leave a place for the spirit of God in your life. God loves you. And God has a wonderful will and wisdom for the living of your life. If you will but begin to seek for it and live it in love for God and others, living as the son or daughter of God, you really are. Your material life is a given. Your spiritual life is a decision, the choice to turn your life and will over to the living God. Always leave a place for the great spirit in your life in your planning, your thinking, your deliberations, and all things will begin to be transformed. There's an old American Indian proverb, never judge your brother until you have walked a mile in his moccasins. And an ancient Roman saying, you can never know from looking at another man exactly where his boots pinch his feet. You simply cannot know what another person is going through or what motivates 
your fellow mortal on this earth. Judge not that you be not judged. It is written, for only God can rightly, justly, and truly know the inner purposes and aspirations of a fellow man or woman on this earth. Be slow to anger and quick to forgive. Love truth and speak truthfully and not, as the Indians used to say, with a forked tongue, not in duplicitous deceit, but with reverence for the good, the true, and the beautiful. For you shall know the truth, and the truth will make you free. God is truth, wrote Plato, and light is his shadow. God is love, and perfect love casts out all fear. You are infinitely loved by the infinite God, and you need have no fear of life nor of death. For in my father's house are many mansions, declared the master. And as the Indians put it, you one day will walk the happy hunting grounds in the land of the great spirit, father of all. My grandfather was C.J. Mose Neal. He grew up near the Cahola and Quinamo tribes in the blue stem flint hills and grasslands of the Meridacene River Valley of eastern Kansas. He later became mayor of Emporia, Kansas, a small college town in that state, but he taught me that the greatest spiritual truths he knew were ones which he had learned from those Indians, respect for life, reverence for truth. The Indians would not tolerate what he said they called storying, making up a false story or lying, and above all, they taught awe and honor of the great spirit, the one the white men knew as God whose wisdom and power pervades all things, and to do whose will is the highest calling of all of humankind. Thus was I taught from boyhood, and thus I believe today that the real meaning of human life is spiritual, and that to live in love for God and others is the high plan and purpose of life. For this you were born and created, and with nothing less than that will you ever be contented. You are a son or daughter of this great spirit, the living God, who loves you with a love older than the mountains, the trees, the sun, and the stars. You belong here. You have a place here on this planet. The red man knew and taught this truth for the many moons of the many millennia, and you can know it, too. And if you've never known it before, may you come to know it now by living faith this moment. May the great spirit sit in the circle of your decision-making, of your counsels, as you plan for your future. God has a wonderful will for the living of your life. God loves you with a love which will not let you go. God has given a fragment of infinity, a spark of spirit, something of the very essence of God's spiritual nature to indwell your mind, to guide and lead you down the uncertain pathway of your life and into all eternity with faith, if you will but dare to believe it, said the Master, the kingdom of God is within you. The spirit in man is the candle of God searching all the inward parts and the two great commandments where you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart with all your soul, with all your mind and strength, and you shall love your neighbor as yourself. And I knew the late W.W. W. Keeler, the first elected chief of the Oklahoma Cherokee Nation, former chairman and chief executive officer of Phillips Petroleum Company, and among the personal papers found in the desk of this old Indian when he died in Bartlesville at the age of 79 was this prayer which he had written. Into the holy omnipresence of God I give myself, my plans, my ideas, and all the affairs of my life this day. I dwell in the secret place of the Most High, and his overshadowing presence watches over me, my family, my business and all the things appertaining to me, God walks and talks in me. And wherever I go, his love accompanies me. His spiritual gifts flow 
to me endlessly and ceaselessly. And I walk the earth with the praise of God forever on my lips. So may you live your life and die your death a brim with the love of your Father in heaven, and living in faith for now and for all eternity as the son or daughter of God you are, as the child of the great spirit you were born and created to be. May you claim that truth by living faith this very instant. As you listen to this radio broadcast somewhere on this good green planet, whether by satellite or shortwave in Europe, Asia, Africa, Australia, the Middle East, the Caribbean, China, somewhere in North America, Canada, South or Central America, wherever you're listening to this broadcast, and we've received wonderful letters from you from all over the world. In this moment, as you listen to this broadcast, I call you to make that great commitment in your soul and in your mind for now and for eternity to give your will and your life to the living God who gave you your life in the first place, who loves you with a love which will not let you go, and who calls you to newness of life. And if you will begin to live in this tremendous faith, this joy, this new perspective, all things, all things will begin to become as new for you. Write to us at the Spiritual Renaissance Institute, Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. I've written pieces of literature on finding God, getting to know God, seven principles of prayer, the fatherhood of God, and the brotherhood of man. They're all in a booklet titled Growing Spiritually. And it's yours without cost, charge, or obligation when you write to us. We also have one titled Life After Death. What happens when you die and what happens afterward? Write for this. Box 3080, Oakhurst, California, 93644, United States of America. This is a non-sectarian, non-profit program proclaiming the dawning spiritual renaissance, the fatherhood of God and the brotherhood of man, the worldwide family of God. And so for now, this is Vern Benham Grimsley saying, May God's will be done by you. Good day.